Scottish Gaelic Gaedlig ka elach, listen or Scots Gaelic, sometimes also referred to simply as Gaelic, is a Celtic language native to the Gaels of Scotland. A member of the Goidelic branch of the Celtic languages, Scottish Gaelic, like modern Irish and Manx, developed out of Middle Irish. Most of modern Scotland was once Gaelic-speaking, as evidenced especially by Gaelic language placenames. In the 2011 census of Scotland, 57,375 people, 1.1% of the Scottish population aged over 3 years old, reported as able to speak Gaelic, 1,275 fewer than in 2001. The highest percentages of Gaelic speakers were in the Outer Hebrides. Only about half of speakers were fully fluent in the language. Nevertheless, there are revival efforts, and the number of speakers of the language under age 20 did not decrease between the 2001 and 2011 censuses. Outside Scotland, Canadian Gaelic is spoken mainly in Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. Scottish Gaelic is not an official language of either the European Union or the United Kingdom. However, it is classed as an indigenous language under the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages, which the British government has ratified, and the Gaelic Language Scotland Act 2005 established a language development body, Board na Gaedlig. Topic: <laughs> Nomenclature. Aside from Scottish Gaelic, the language may also be referred to simply as Gaelic. Pronounced or in English, Gaelic may also refer to the Irish language. Scottish Gaelic is distinct from Scots, the Middle English derived language varieties which had come to be spoken in most of the lowlands of Scotland by the early modern era. Prior to the 15th century, these dialects were known as English, English by its own speakers, with Gaelic being called Scotties. Scottish. From the late 15th century, however, it became increasingly common for such speakers to refer to Scottish Gaelic as Erse, Irish, and the Lowland vernacular as Scotties. Today, Scottish Gaelic is recognised as a separate language from Irish, so the word Erse in reference to Scottish Gaelic is no longer used. Topic: History. Topic: Origins. Gaelic was commonly believed to have been brought to Scotland, in the 4th–5th centuries CE, by settlers from Ireland who founded the Gaelic Kingdom of Dal Riata on Scotland's west coast in present-day Argyll, 551–66 However, this theory is no longer universally accepted. In his academic paper Were the Scots Irish? archaeologist Dr Ewan Campbell says that there is no archaeological or placename evidence of a migration or takeover. This lack of archaeological evidence was previously noted by Professor Leslie Alcock. Archaeological evidence shows that Argyll was different from Ireland, before and after the supposed migration, but that it also formed part of the Irish Sea Province with Ireland, being easily distinguished from the rest of Scotland. Gaelic in Scotland was mostly confined to Dal Riata until the 8th century, when it began expanding into Pictish areas north of the Firth of Forth and the Firth of Clyde. By 900, Pictish appears to have become extinct, completely replaced by Gaelic. 238 to 244, an exception might be made for the Northern Isles. However, where Pictish was more likely supplanted by Norse rather than by Gaelic, in 1018, after the conquest of the Lothians by the Kingdom of Scotland, Gaelic reached its social, cultural, political, and geographic zenith. 16 to 18 colloquial speech in Scotland had been developing independently of that in Ireland since the 8th century. For the first time, the entire region of modern-day Scotland was called Scotia in Latin, and Gaelic was the lingua Scotia. 276–554 In southern Scotland, Gaelic was strong in Galloway, adjoining areas to the north and west, West Lothian, and parts of western Midlothian. It was spoken to a lesser degree in North Ayrshire, Renfrewshire, the Clyde Valley and eastern Dumfrieshire. In southeastern Scotland, there is no evidence that Gaelic was ever widely spoken. Topic. Decline Many historians mark the reign of King Malcolm Canmore Malcolm III as the beginning of Gaelic's eclipse in Scotland. His wife Margaret spoke no Gaelic, gave her children Anglo-Saxon rather than Gaelic names, and brought many English bishops, priests, and monastics to Scotland. 19 When Malcolm and Margaret died in 1093, the Gaelic aristocracy rejected their Anglicised sons and instead backed Malcolm's brother Donald Ban. 
Donald had spent 17 years in Gaelic Ireland and his power base was in the thoroughly Gaelic west of Scotland. He was the last Scottish monarch to be buried on Iona, the traditional burial place of the Gaelic kings of Dal Riata and the Kingdom of Alba. However, during the reigns of Malcolm Canmore's sons, Edgar, Alexander I and David I their successive reigns lasting 1097–1153, Anglo-Norman names and practices spread throughout Scotland south of the Forth Clyde Line and along the northeastern coastal plain as far north as Moray. Norman French completely displaced Gaelic at court. The establishment of royal boroughs throughout the same area, particularly under David I, attracted large numbers of foreigners speaking Old English. This was the beginning of Gaelic status as a predominantly rural language in Scotland. 19 to 23. Clan chiefs in the northern and western parts of Scotland continued to support Gaelic bards who remained a central feature of court life there. The semi-independent lordship of the Isles in the Hebrides and western coastal mainland remained thoroughly Gaelic since the language's recovery there in the 12th century, providing a political foundation for cultural prestige down to the end of the 15th century, 553–6 by the mid-14th century what eventually came to be called Scots at that time termed English emerged as the official language of government and law, 139 Scotland's emergent nationalism in the era following the conclusion of the wars of Scottish independence was organized organized using Scots as well. For example, the nation's great patriotic literature including John Barber's The Bruss 1375 and Blind Harry's The Wallace before 1488 was written in Scots, not Gaelic. By the end of the 15th century, English, Scots speakers referred to Gaelic instead as Irish or Erse, i.e. Irish and their own language as Scotties, 19-23. Scottish Gaelic has a rich oral Bool and written tradition, having been the language of the Bardic culture of the Highland clans for many years. However, the language was suppressed by the Scottish and later British states, especially after the Battle of Culloden in 1746, during the Highland clearances, and by the exclusion of Scottish Gaelic from the educational system. Even before then, charitable schools operated by the Society in Scotland for the Propagation of Christian Knowledge SSPCK used instructional methods designed to suppress the language in favour of English and corporal punishment against students using Gaelic. 1-1335 This was counterbalanced by the activities of the Gaelic School Society, founded in 1811. Their primary purpose was to teach Gaels literacy in their own language, with emphasis on being able to read the Bible. 98 The first well known translation of the Bible into Scottish Gaelic was made in 1767 when Dr. James Stewart of Killen and Dougald Buchanan of Rannoch produced a translation of the New Testament. The translation of the entire Bible was completed in 1801. In the first quarter of the 19th century, the SSPCK and the British and Foreign Bible Society distributed 60,000 Gaelic Bibles and 80,000 New Testaments. 98 Very few European languages have made the transition to a modern literary language without an early modern translation of the Bible. The lack of a well known translation may have contributed to the decline of Scottish Gaelic. 168 202 Topic Defunct dialects Dialects of Lowland Gaelic have been defunct since the 18th century. Gaelic in the eastern and southern Scottish Highlands, although alive in the mid-20th century, is now largely defunct. Although modern Scottish Gaelic is dominated by the dialects of the Outer Hebrides and Isle of Skye, there remain some speakers of the Inner Hebridean dialects of Tyree and Isla, and even a few elderly native speakers from Highland areas including Wester Ross, Northwest Sutherland, Lochaber, and Argyll. Dialects on both sides of the Straits of Moyle the North Channel linking Scottish Gaelic with Irish are now extinct, though native speakers were still to be found on the Mull of Kintyre, in Rathlin and in North East Ireland as late as the mid-20th century. Records of their speech show that Irish and Scottish Gaelic existed in a dialect chain with no clear language boundary. Some features of moribund dialects have been preserved in Nova Scotia, including the pronunciation of the broad or velarized L, L as W, as in the Lochaber dialect. 131 Topic Status The Endangered Languages Project lists Gaelic status as threatened, with 20,000 to 30,000 active users. UNESCO classifies Gaelic as definitely endangered. Topic number of speakers The 1755-2001 figures are census data quoted by Macaulay, 141 The 2011 Gaelic speakers figures come from table KS206SC of the 2011 census. 
The 2011 total population figure comes from Table KS101 SC. Note that the numbers of Gaelic speakers relate to the numbers aged 3 and over, and the percentages are calculated using those and the number of the total population aged 3 and over. Topic distribution In Scotland the 2011 UK census showed a total of 57,375 Gaelic speakers in Scotland 1.1% of population over three years old, of whom only 32,400 could also read and write, due to the lack of Gaelic medium education in Scotland. Compared to the 2001 census, there has been a diminution of approximately 1,300 people. This is the smallest drop between censuses since the Gaelic language question was first asked in 1881. The Scottish Government's language minister and board Na Gaedlig took this as evidence that Gaelic's long decline has slowed. The main stronghold of the language continues to be the Outer Hebrides Na H. and Seer, where the overall proportion of speakers is 52.2%. Important pockets of the language also exist in the Highlands 5.4% and in Argyll and Butte 4.0% and Inverness where 4.9% speak the language. The locality with the largest absolute number is Glasgow with 5878 such persons who make up over 10% of all of Scotland's Gaelic speakers. Gaelic continues to decline in its traditional heartland. Between 2001 and 2011, the absolute number of Gaelic speakers fell sharply in the Western Isles minus 1,745, Argyll and Butte minus 694, and Highland minus 634. The drop in Stornoway, the largest parish in the Western Isles by population, was especially acute, from 57.5% of the population in 1991 to 43.4% in 2011. The only parish outside the Western Isles over 40% Gaelic speaking is Kilmere in Northern Skye at 46%. The islands in the Inner Hebrides with significant percentages of Gaelic speakers are Tyree 38.3%, Rosse 30.4%, Skye 29.4%, Lismore 26.9%, Colense 20.2% and Isla 19.0%. As a result of continued decline in the traditional Gaelic heartlands, today no civil parish in Scotland has a proportion of Gaelic speakers greater than 65% the highest value is in Barvis, Lewis, with 64.1%. In addition, no civil parish on mainland Scotland has a proportion of Gaelic speakers greater than 20% the highest value is in Ardnamurchan, Highland, with 19.3%. Out of a total of 871 civil parishes in Scotland, the proportion of Gaelic speakers exceeds 50% in seven parishes, exceeds 25% in 14 parishes, and exceeds 10% in 35 parishes. Decline in traditional areas has recently been balanced by growth in the Scottish lowlands. Between the 2001 and 2011 censuses, the number of Gaelic speakers rose in 19 of the country's 32 council areas. The largest absolute gains were in Aberdeenshire plus 526, North Lanarkshire plus 305, Aberdeen City plus 216, and East Ayrshire plus 208. The largest relative gains were in Aberdeenshire plus 0.19%, East Ayrshire plus 0.18%, Moray plus 0.16%, and Orkney plus 0.13%. As with other Celtic languages, monolingualism is non-existent except among native-speaking children under school age in traditional Gatehealthish areas. In 2014, the census of pupils in Scotland showed 497 pupils in publicly funded schools had Gaelic as the main language at home, a drop of 18% from 606 students in 2010. During the same period, Gaelic medium education in Scotland has grown, with 3,583 pupils being educated in a Gaelic immersion environment in 2014, up from 2,638 pupils in 2009. However, even among pupils enrolled in Gaelic medium schools, 81% of primary students and 74% of secondary students report using English more often than Gaelic when speaking with their mothers at home. Usage Official Scotland Topic. Scottish Parliament 
Gaelic has long suffered from its lack of use in educational and administrative contexts and was long suppressed. The UK government has ratified the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages in respect of Gaelic. Along with Irish and Welsh, Gaelic is designated under Part 3 of the Charter, which requires the UK government to take a range of concrete measures in the fields of education, justice, public administration, broadcasting and culture. It has not received the same degree of official recognition from the UK government as Welsh. With the advent of devolution, however, Scottish matters have begun to receive greater attention, and it achieved a degree of official recognition when the Gaelic Language Scotland Act was enacted by the Scottish Parliament on 21 April 2005. The key provisions of the Act are Establishing the Gaelic Development Body, Board na Gaelic, BNG, on a statutory basis with a view to securing the status of the Gaelic language as an official language of Scotland commanding equal respect to the English language and to promote the use and understanding of Gaelic. Requiring BNG to prepare a national Gaelic language plan every five years for approval by Scottish ministers. Requiring BNG to produce guidance on Gaelic medium education and Gaelic as a subject for education authorities. Requiring public bodies in Scotland, both Scottish public bodies and cross-border public bodies insofar as they carry out devolved functions, to develop Gaelic language plans in relation to the services they offer, if requested to do so by BNG, following a consultation period, in which the government received many submissions, the majority of which asked that the bill be strengthened, a revised bill was published, the main alteration was that the guidance of the board is now statutory, rather than advisory. In the committee stages in the Scottish Parliament, there was much debate over whether Gaelic should be given equal validity with English. Due to executive concerns about resourcing implications if this wording was used, the Education Committee settled on the concept of equal respect. It is not clear what the legal force of this wording is. The Act was passed by the Scottish Parliament unanimously, with support from all sectors of the Scottish political spectrum, on 21 April 2005. Under the provisions of the Act, it will ultimately fall to BNG to secure the status of the Gaelic language as an official language of Scotland. Some commentators, such as Eamon O. Gribbon 2006, argue that the Gaelic Act falls so far short of the status accorded to Welsh that one would be foolish or naive to believe that any substantial change will occur in the fortunes of the language as a result of Board na Gaedlig's efforts. On 10 December 2008, to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Scottish Human Rights Commission had the UDHR translated into Gaelic for the first time. However, given there are no longer any monolingual Gaelic speakers, Following an appeal in the court case of Taylor v. Honey 1982, involving the status of Gaelic in judicial proceedings, the High Court ruled against a general right to use Gaelic in court proceedings. Topic. Qualifications in the language the Scottish Qualifications Authority offer two streams of Gaelic examination across all levels of the syllabus, Gaelic for learners equivalent to the modern foreign languages syllabus and Gaelic for native speakers equivalent to the English syllabus, and Comun Gaedhaelach performs assessment of spoken Gaelic, resulting in the issue of a bronze card, silver card or gold card. Syllabus details are available on an Comun's website. These are not widely recognized as qualifications, but are required for those taking part in certain competitions at the annual MODs. Topic. European Union In October 2009, a new agreement was made which allows Scottish Gaelic to be used formally between Scottish Government ministers and European Union officials. The deal was signed by Britain's representative to the EU, Sir Kim Derrick, and the Scottish Government. This does not give Scottish Gaelic official status in the EU, but gives it the right to be a means of formal communications in the EU's institutions. The Scottish Government will have to pay for the translation from Gaelic to other European languages. The deal was received positively in Scotland. Secretary of State for Scotland Jim Murphy said the move was a strong sign of the UK government's support for Gaelic. He said that Allowing Gaelic speakers to communicate with European institutions in their mother tongue is a progressive step forward and one which should be welcomed. Culture Minister Mike Russell said that, This is a significant step forward for the recognition of Gaelic both at home and abroad, and I look forward to addressing the Council in Gaelic very soon. 
Seeing Gaelic spoken in such a forum raises the profile of the language as we drive forward our commitment to creating a new generation of Gaelic speakers in Scotland." The Scottish Gaelic used in machine-readable British passports differs from Irish passports in places. Passport is rendered Cade Siubile in Irish, PA, the European Union, AONADH ORPAC in Irish, and Tawantas ORPAC, while Northern Ireland is Aran a Tuath in Gaelic, the Irish equivalent is Tuaishart Aran. Topic. Signage Bilingual road signs, street names, business and advertisement signage in both Gaelic and English are gradually being introduced throughout Gaelic-speaking regions in the Highlands and Islands, including Argyll. In many cases, this has simply meant re-adopting the traditional spelling of a name such as Radigan or Loch Eyart rather than the anglicised forms Radigan or Loch Eilort respectively. Bilingual railway station signs are now more frequent than they used to be. Practically all the stations in the Highland area use both English and Gaelic, and the spread of bilingual station signs is becoming ever more frequent in the lowlands of Scotland, including areas where Gaelic has not been spoken for a long time. This has been welcomed by many supporters of the language as a means of raising its profile as well as securing its future as a living language, i.e., allowing people to use it to navigate from A to B in place of English and creating a sense of place. However, in some places, such as Caithness, the Highland Council's intention to introduce bilingual signage has incited controversy. The Ordnance Survey has acted in recent years to correct many of the mistakes that appear on maps. They announced in 2004 that they intended to correct them and set up a committee to determine the correct forms of Gaelic place names for their maps. Ainmean Eight na H Alba. Place Names in Scotland is the national advisory partnership for Gaelic place names in Scotland. Topic. Canada In the 19th century, Canadian Gaelic was the third most widely spoken language in Canada and Gaelic-speaking immigrant communities could be found throughout the country. Gaelic poets in Canada produced a significant literary tradition. The number of Gaelic-speaking individuals and communities declined sharply, however, after the First World War, Nova Scotia is home to 1,275 Gaelic speakers as of 2011, of whom 300 claim to have Gaelic as their mother tongue. The Nova Scotia government maintains an Office of Gaelic Affairs which works to promote the Gaelic language, culture, and tourism. As in Scotland, areas of northeastern Nova Scotia and Cape Breton have bilingual street signs. Nova Scotia also has Comherly na Gaedlig the Gaelic Council of Nova Scotia, a non-profit society dedicated to the maintenance and promotion of the Gaelic language and culture in Maritime Canada. Maxville Public School in Maxville, Glengarry, Ontario, Canada offers Scottish Gaelic lessons weekly. In Prince Edward Island, the Colonel Gray High School now offers both an introductory and an advanced course in Gaelic, both language and history are taught in these classes. This is the first recorded time that Gaelic has ever been taught as an official course on Prince Edward Island. The province of British Columbia is host to the Komun Gaelic Bonkubher, the Gaelic Society of Vancouver, the Vancouver Gaelic Choir, the Victoria Gaelic Choir, as well as the annual Gaelic festival Mod Vancouver. The city of Vancouver's Scottish Cultural Centre also holds seasonal Scottish Gaelic evening classes. Topic: Media The BBC operates a Gaelic-language radio station Radio Nan Gaedial as well as a television channel, BBC Alba. Launched on 19 September 2008, BBC Alba is widely available in the UK on Freeview, Freesat, Sky and Virgin Media. It also broadcasts across Europe on the Astra 2 satellites. The channel is being operated in partnership between BBC Scotland and MG Alba, an organisation funded by the Scottish Government, which works to promote the Gaelic language in broadcasting. The ITV franchise in central Scotland, STV Central, produces a number of Scottish Gaelic programmes for both BBC Alba and its own main channel. Until BBC Alba was broadcast on Freeview, viewers were able to receive the channel Teleg, which broadcast for an hour every evening. Upon BBC Alba's launch on Freeview, it took the channel number that was previously assigned to Teleg. There are also television programmes in the language on other BBC channels and on the independent commercial channels, usually subtitled in English. 
The ITV franchise in the north of Scotland, STV North formerly Grampian Television produces some non-news programming in Scottish Gaelic. Education Scotland the Education Scotland Act 1872, which completely ignored Gaelic, and led to generations of Gaels being forbidden to speak their native language in the classroom, is now recognised as having dealt a major blow to the language. People still living can recall being beaten for speaking Gaelic in school. Even later, when these attitudes had changed, little provision was made for Gaelic medium education in Scottish schools. As late as 1958, even in Highland schools, only 20% of primary students were taught Gaelic as a subject, and only 5% were taught other subjects through the Gaelic language. Gaelic medium playgroups for young children began to appear in Scotland during the late 1970s and early 1980s. Parent enthusiasm may have been a factor in the establishment of the first Gaelic medium primary school units in Glasgow and Inverness in 1985. The first modern solely Gaelic medium secondary school, Segoyal Gedlig Glosschu, Glasgow Gaelic School, was opened at Woodside in Glasgow in 2006. 61 partially Gaelic medium primary schools and approximately a dozen Gaelic medium secondary schools also exist. According to Board Na Gaedlig, a total of 2,092 primary pupils were enrolled in Gaelic medium primary education in 2008 09, as opposed to 24 in 1985. The Columba Initiative, also known as Colmsel, formerly Iomert Chom Seal, is a body that seeks to promote links between speakers of Scottish Gaelic and Irish. <laughs> Canada in May 2004, the Nova Scotia government announced the funding of an initiative to support the language and its culture within the province. Several public schools in northeastern Nova Scotia and Cape Breton offer Gaelic classes as part of the high school curriculum. The government's Gaelic Affairs offers lunchtime lessons to public servants in Halifax. Maxville Public School in Maxville, Glengarry, Ontario, Canada offers Scottish Gaelic lessons weekly, and Prince Edward Island, Canada, the Colonel Gray High School offer an introductory and an advanced course in Scottish Gaelic. Topic. Higher and further education a number of Scottish and some Irish universities offer full-time degrees including a Gaelic language element, usually graduating as Celtic studies. St. Francis Javier University, the Gaelic College of Celtic Arts and Crafts and Cape Breton University formerly University College of Cape Breton in Nova Scotia, Canada also offer a Celtic Studies degrees and or Gaelic language programs. In Russia the Moscow State University offers Gaelic language, history and culture courses. The University of the Highlands and Islands offers a range of Gaelic language, history and culture courses at NC, HND, BA Ordinary, BA Hans and MSc, and offers opportunities for postgraduate research through the medium of Gaelic. Residential courses at Sabal Moor Osteg on the Isle of Skye offer adults the chance to become fluent in Gaelic in one year. Many continue to complete degrees, or to follow up as distance learners. A number of other colleges offer a one-year certificate course, which is also available online pending accreditation. Lewes Castle College's Benbecula campus offers an independent one-year course in Gaelic and Traditional Music FE, SQF level 5 Topic Church in the Western Isles, the Isles of Lewis, Harris and North Uist have a Presbyterian majority largely Church of Scotland, Eglay na H. Alba in Gaelic, Free Church of Scotland and Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland, the Isles of South Uist and Barra have a Catholic majority. All these churches have Gaelic-speaking congregations throughout the Western Isles. Notable city congregations with regular services in Gaelic are St. Columba's Church, Glasgow and Greyfriars Tollbooth and Highland Kirk, Edinburgh. Liebhar Shirbaishan, a shorter Gaelic version of the English language Book of Common Order, was published in 1996 by the Church of Scotland. The widespread use of English in worship has often been suggested as one of the historic reasons for the decline of Gaelic. The Church of Scotland is supportive today, but has a shortage of Gaelic speaking ministers. The Free Church also recently announced plans to abolish Gaelic language communion services, citing both a lack of ministers and a desire to have their congregations united at communion time. 
Topic literature from the 6th century to the present day, Scottish Gaelic has been used as the language of literature. Two prominent writers of the 20th century are Anne Frater and Sorley MacLean. Topic names Topic Personal names Gaelic has its own version of European-wide names which also have English forms, for example, Ian John, Alasdair Alexander, Uliam William, Catriona Catherine, Raybert Robert, Kyristiona Christina, Anna Anne, Myri Mary, Sumas James, Padraig Patrick and Tomas Thomas. Not all traditional Gaelic names have direct equivalents in English, Oirig, which is normally rendered as Euphemia Effie or Henrietta Edda, formerly also as Henny or even as Harriet, or Diorbal, which is matched with Dorothy, simply on the basis of a certain similarity in spelling. Many of these traditional Gaelic-only names are now regarded as old-fashioned, and hence are rarely or never used. Some names have come into Gaelic from Old Norse, for example, Somherli some Scottish names are anglicised forms of Gaelic names, Angus Angus, Donal Donald, for instance. Hamish, and the recently established Mary pronounced v -a -re come from the Gaelic for, respectively, James, and Mary, but derive from the form of the names as they appear in the vocative case, Sumas James Nam, Shume v -o -c, and, Myri Mary Nam, Mary v -o -c. Topic. Surnames The most common class of Gaelic surnames are those beginning with Mac Gaelic for son, such as MacGilliathane, MacLithane, MacLean. The female form is Nick Gaelic for daughter, so Catherine McPhee is properly called in Gaelic, Catriona Nick of Phi strictly. Nick is a contraction of the Gaelic phrase Nyan Mhic, meaning daughter of the son. Thus Nigdonail really means daughter of MacDonald, rather than daughter of Donald. The of part actually comes from the genitive form of the patronymic that follows the prefix, in the case of MacDonnell, Donnell, of Donald, is the genitive form of Donal, Donald. Several colors give rise to common Scottish surnames, Ban, Bain, White, Rua, Roy, Red, Dubh, Dow, Duff, Black, Don, Dun, Brown, Bidhi, Bowie, Yellow. Topic. Phonology Most varieties of Gaelic have either eight or nine vowel phonemes, i.e., a, o, u, which can be either long or short. There are also two reduced vowels, which only occur short. Although some vowels are strongly nasal, instances of distinctive nasality are rare. There are about nine diphthongs and a few triphthongs. Most consonants have both palatal and non-palatal counterparts, including a very rich system of liquids, nasals and trills i.e. three contrasting L sounds, three contrasting N sounds and three contrasting R sounds. The historically voiced stops BD have lost their voicing, so the phonemic contrast today is between unaspirated PT, K and aspirated PT, K. In many dialects, these stops may however gain voicing through secondary articulation through a preceding nasal, for examples Doris T, S, door, but and Doris, the door, as N, D, S, or N, S. In some fixed phrases, these changes are shown permanently, as the link with the base words has been lost, as in Andrasta, now, from an trath saw, this time, period. In medial and final position, the aspirated stops are preaspirated rather than aspirated. Topic. Grammar Scottish Gaelic is an Indo-European language with an inflecting morphology, verb-subject-object word order and two grammatical genders. Topic. Noun inflection Gaelic nouns inflect for four cases nominative, accusative, vocative, genitive and dative and three numbers singular, dual and plural. They are also normally classed as either masculine or feminine. A small number of words that used to belong to the neuter class show some degree of gender confusion. For example, in some dialects a mur, the sea, behaves as a masculine noun in the nominative case, but as a feminine noun in the genitive namara. Nouns are marked for case in a number of ways, most commonly involving various combinations of lenition, palatalization and suffixation. Topic. Verb inflection There are twelve irregular verbs. 
Most other verbs follow a fully predictable paradigm, although polysyllabic verbs ending in laterals can deviate from this paradigm as they show syncopation. There are three persons, first, second and third, Two numbers, singular and plural Two voices, traditionally called active and passive, but actually personal and impersonal Three non-composed combined TAM forms expressing tense, aspect and mood, i.e. non-past future habitual, conditional future of the past, and past preterite. Several composed TAM forms, such as pluperfect, future perfect, present perfect, present continuous, past continuous, conditional perfect, etc. Two verbs, by, used to attribute a notionally temporary state, action, or quality to the subject, and is, used to show a notional permanent identity or quality, have non-composed present and non-past tense forms, by, de, perfective present, be, bithy, imperfective non-past, is, is imperfective non-past, bu past and conditional. Four moods, independent used in affirmative main clause verbs, relative used in verbs in affirmative relative clauses, dependent used in subordinate clauses, anti-affirmative relative clauses, and anti-affirmative main clauses, and subjunctive. Topic. Word order Word order is strictly verb subject object, including questions, negative questions and negatives. Only a restricted set of proverb particles may occur before the verb. Topic. Lexicon The majority of the vocabulary of Scottish Gaelic is native Celtic. There are a large number of borrowings from Latin, muinter, didimnach from dies, dominica, norse, aelian from aeland, sagir from skir, french, siomar from chambre, and scots, aidh, bramar. There are also many Brythonic influences on Scottish Gaelic. Scottish Gaelic contains a number of apparently P Celtic loanwords, but it is not always possible to disentangle P and Q Celtic words. However some common words such as mana equals Welsh minded, cumbric asterisk moni are clearly of P-Celtic origin, in common with other Indo-European languages. The neologisms which are coined for modern concepts are typically based on Greek or Latin, although often coming through English, television, for instance, becomes television and computer becomes coempiutar. Some speakers use an English word even if there is a Gaelic equivalent, applying the rules of Gaelic grammar. With verbs, for instance, they will simply add the verbal suffix e -a -d -h, or, in Lewis, igeed, as in de mio watched Lewis, watchigeed, and telly, I am watching the television, instead of de mia coimhead air and television. This phenomenon was described over 170 years ago, by the minister who compiled the account covering the parish of Stornoway in the New Statistical Account of Scotland, and examples can be found dating to the 18th century. However, as Gaelic medium education grows in popularity, a newer generation of literate Gaels is becoming more familiar with modern Gaelic vocabulary. Topic: <laughs> Loanwords into other languages. Scottish Gaelic has also influenced the Scots language and English, particularly Scottish Standard English. Loanwords include, whiskey, slogan, brogue, jilt, clan, trousers, gob, as well as familiar elements of Scottish geography like ben, bean, glen, glean, and loch. Irish has also influenced lowland Scots and English in Scotland, but it is not always easy to distinguish its influence from that of Scottish Gaelic. Topic. Writing system Topic. Alphabet. The modern Scottish Gaelic alphabet has 18 letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, M, N, O, P, R, S, T, U The letter H, now mostly used to indicate lenition historically sometimes inaccurately called aspiration of a consonant, was in general not used in the oldest orthography, as lenition was instead indicated with a dot over the lenited consonant. The letters of the alphabet were traditionally named after trees, but this custom has fallen out of use. Long vowels are marked with a grave accent a, e, i, o, u, indicated through digraphs e awas, or conditioned by certain consonant environments e.g. a u preceding a non-intervocalic n n as u. 
Traditional spelling systems also use the acute accent on the letters A, A and O to denote a change in vowel quality rather than length, but the reformed spellings have replaced these with the grave. Certain 18th century sources used only an acute accent along the lines of Irish, such as in the writings of Alastair Mac Mostier Alastair (1741–51) and the earliest editions (1768–90) of Duncan Ban MacIntyre. Topic. Orthography The 1767 New Testament set the standard for Scottish Gaelic. The 1981 Scottish Examination Board recommendations for Scottish Gaelic, the Gaelic Orthographic Conventions, were adopted by most publishers and agencies, although they remain controversial among some academics, most notably Ronald Black. The quality of consonants palatalized or non -palatalized is indicated in writing by the vowels surrounding them. So called slender consonants are palatalized while broad consonants are neutral or velarized. The vowels e and i are classified as slender, and a, o, and u as broad. The spelling rule known as cowl re cowl agus leathen re leathen, slender to slender and broad to broad, requires that a word medial consonant or consonant group followed by a written i or e be also preceded by an i or e, and similarly if followed by a, o or u be also preceded by an a, o, or u. This rule sometimes leads to the insertion of an orthographic vowel that does not influence the pronunciation of the vowel. For example, plurals in Gaelic are often formed with the suffix an n, for example, brog prk shoe, brogan prk shoes. But because of the spelling rule, the suffix is spelled ian but pronounced the same, n after a slender consonant, as in muinter me, tr a people, muintirian me, trn peoples where the written e is purely a graphic vowel inserted to conform with the spelling rule because an i precedes the r. Unstressed vowels omitted in speech can be omitted in informal writing. For example, demi and doches, I hope. Greater than demi and doches, Gaelic orthographic rules are mostly regular, however, English sound-to-letter correspondences cannot be applied to written Gaelic. Scots English orthographic rules have also been used at various times in Gaelic writing. Notable examples of Gaelic verse composed in this manner are the Book of the Dean of Lismore and the Fernag Manuscript. Topic. Common words and phrases with Irish and Manx equivalents Note, items in brackets denote archaic or dialectal forms Topic. See also Topic. References Topic. Notes Topic. Citations Topic. Resources Gillies, H. Cameron, 1896. Elements of Gaelic Grammar. Vancouver, Global Language Press Reprint 2006, ISBN 1-897367-02-3 Hardcover, ISBN 1-897367-00-7 Paperback Gillies, William, 1993. Scottish Gaelic. In Ball, Martin J. and Fife, James E. D. S. The Celtic Languages Routledge Language Family Descriptions. London, Routledge. ISBN 0 415 28080 X. Paperback, p. 145 227. Lamb, William, 2001. Scottish Gaelic. Munich, Lincoln Europa, ISBN 3 89586 408 0. Macaulay, Garbhan, 2007. Tazgi, a Gaelic thesaurus. Lulu Enterprises, N. Carolina. MacLeod, Wilson, ed. 2006. Revitalizing Gaelic in Scotland: Policy, Planning, and Public Discourse. Edinburgh: Dunedin Academic Press. ISBN 1-903765-59-5. Robertson, Charles M. 1906-07. Scottish Gaelic Dialects. The Celtic Review, Vol. 3, pp. 97 113, 223 39, 319 32. Topic. External links 
BBC Alba – Scottish Gaelic Language, Music and News Board na Gaelic – Scotland's Gaelic Language Board Gaelic in Medieval Scotland – Advent and Expansion by Thomas Owen Clancy, Sir John Rees Memorial Lecture, 4 March 2009 Gaelic Resource Database, founded by Comherly Nan Eileen Seer Scottish Gaelic Swadesh List of Basic Vocabulary Words from Wiktionary's Swadesh List Appendix Ficlair Dwelly Air Lloydney, Dwelly's Gaelic Dictionary Online Gaelic Air and Lion, Sabal More Ostegs links to pages in and about Scottish Gaelic Gaelic Scottish Gaelic Local Studies – Census Information from 1881 to the present, 27 volumes covering all Gaelic-speaking regions Goidelic Dictionaries Parlamade na H. Alba, Gaelic – Scottish Parliament site in Gaelic Gaelic Psalms at Back Free Church, Isle of Lewis 629. Sermons in Scottish Gaelic, Back Free Church, Back, Isle of Lewis Comherly na Gaelic, the Gaelic Council of Nova Scotia Canada. Komun Gaelic Bankubher, the Gaelic Society of Vancouver Canada. DASG, the Digital Archive of Scottish Gaelic and Komun's website Nova Scotia Office of Gaelic Affairs <laughs>